Hi, I'm Tony Fleming, and this is Fleming's Ultimate Garage. Hey, everybody, thanks for joining us on today's video, man. Let me tell you, this is one of those cool kind of times. Check this out, right? Take the emblems off this car. Just take all the emblems off. Let's say there's three emblems on the car, two emblems, one emblem, whatever it is. Take them off the car. Drive down the street, stop at a light, ask somebody, do you know what kind of car is this? Everyone will know right away. T-Bird. You know why? Because this is the car that really started, you know, with the Corvette, you know, this is arguably that time. But this is one of those iconic cars during that 50s period that really took us to a whole different place, man. Think about what cars look like in the 40s. They were very big, certainly not very sporty, right? And then these things come around, they come to a car show. You don't have things like, uh, you know, Porsche 911 turbos and, and Lamborghini Gallardos and things like that that are super exotic and really slung low and whatever. So this thing shows up, it's like, whoa, right? Gorgeous car and these cars here toured the country while they were showing them. So actually the car shows worked a little differently where they didn't ship the cars to a single city, they actually shipped all the cars for those model years all around the country to big cities. Uh, and they would bring them out to like fairs and parades and things like that. Uh, one of the things was like GM's Motorama. You know, and that's how they would display all of their uh, new wear for the new year. This is the 55 T-Bird, so it would have come out in late 54, right? Think about this, man. This car is 60, heading to 70 years old. I mean, it is an amazing piece of history. This one is restored nicely, and what's cool about it, too, is very few cars in the world can pull off this color. T-Bird Blue, it's the original color with the painted rims, all right? Probably the only upgrades on this car, we'll walk around and look at some of those things. The only upgrades on the car is instead of having bias ply wide white walls like the original cars had, this has radial tires on it and it makes it a much better car to drive. I mean, significantly better. But if you're gonna show this car and you wanna take it to shows and win all the points, you're gonna have to throw a set of bias ply tires on there. We have those in stock here too. I can swap them out for you if you would just rather have those on there. But I'm just telling you those here drive much better. All right, so come on up. This paint here is significantly nicer than it would have been circa 1954, right? Because don't forget too, there was no Honda, there's no Toyota, there was no competition back then. You know, Ford's selling millions of cars, GM's selling millions and millions of cars, and they're just cranking them out, but they didn't make a lot of these here, and that's why these cars are so classic and so collectible and so exotic. Look at the style, man. So it starts, we're back to the jet age, right? The jet age is coming upon us. Here's the intakes for the jet engine, right? A great styling of the egg crate grill. Cool pieces, look at the hood scoop on the car. This is just, uh, as you walk around, look at some of just the styling stuff. Here, fender vents, the call out for the engines. You know, keep in mind, in the 40s, very few cars had V8s, if any. And then the 50s, V8s were just starting to come on. The first Corvette only had what? A six cylinder. These, when they launched them, came with a V8 and they were letting everybody know it's almost 300 cubic inches, 292, but it was almost 300 cubic inches. And this one here has the manual transmission with overdrive as well, which makes it really nice and really uh, uh, rare. And the color, I don't know how many are left in the world like it, but it's a pretty cool piece. So let's keep walking around for a second. I'm gonna show you some of the rest of the stuff on here. So come check this out. This is some of the characteristics of the restoration. That's why you need to know that. Like new bezels, new chrome, new uh, exhaust ports in here. Come on up here for a second. You can see the new exhaust system right here, bent the way it's supposed to be to come out through these pipes here. Not down below the bumper, but these are the bumper exits. How cool is that? And on a cold morning, when they're both coming out, right, from the steam, from the, uh, the exhaust, it looks really, really awesome. All right, let's take a peek under the hood. All right, so listen, you may see this all the time ago, you know, uh, at regular cars and say, well, what a, there's really no big deal. But keep in mind, again, we're talking about the 50s. V8s are just coming on at the time. The V8 engine is just coming out. This one here, 292 cubic inches, almost 300 cubic inches. And cool stuff about this, it's very authentic and very original. For instance, check out the Magneto here, tack drive right here, because it has a working factory tack and the tack is driven off of the distributor, which is really cool. Today's modern cars are electrically uh, operated, so it sends a signal to the tachometer. This is how they did it back in the day. The decals are still on here from MagSpark, showing that this is the correct pieces. Stuff is detailed nicely in here, and it's the right way it should be. Still got uh, the six-volt system in it, and then you got uh, uh, control arms here. You can see they're painted and detailed. The fuel pump painted and detailed. The block looks great. It still has the original generator style on it. It really hasn't been altered much, and uh, that's the way you want to buy a car like this, because the more they're authentic, the more they're worth now and later on. 
because these are carrying on pieces of history. You're talking about pieces of art that you can actually drive. Right, this is kind of cool, some of the styling stuff we talked about here. Again, this is a jet age. You've got the jet engine, the glow of the engine coming out the back, the exhaust like this right here. This is kind of cool too, so instead of putting a big gas cap there or messing up the styling, they were able to put a great looking emblem there and that's how you get to your gas, all right? And the cool thing is too, you don't have to open the trunk to get to your gas tank. All right, but let's open the trunk because what I want you to see is if you went to a show, what you might be able to do, okay? Look how beautifully done even the trunk is. You say, well, what's the big deal? Well, you have no idea what it takes to get all of this looking really good. New gaskets. This is correctly coated inside right here, okay? A spare tire that's painted body color like it's supposed to be. This is kind of a cool mag in here because inside the mag is uh, the chronological order of how uh, the T-Birds all came about from early 55 all the way to, you know, the 80s. And again, they came back out in the, uh, in the 2000s. But like this Glen Plaid or uh, Hounds 2 style looking uh, trunk liner, for instance, that is such a cool piece. Somebody opens up the trunk of this and you know what they do automatically is they smile. You know why? Because they remember this time. This time was a really cool time. I don't care if you're 25 or 75. This is a cool car to ride in. You go to dinner in this car and they're putting this car out front and they're parking the Porsche around back. Okay, so let's come check out the inside. This is kind of cool. Sits three. You know, most sports cars, most sports cars seat only two people. Here, the T-Birds were a little bit different. So keep in mind, you know, the Corvette comes out in the early 50s as well, and it comes with a six cylinder. They come out with a two seater, and this here is you're talking about a three seater car with a manual transmission with this too, which is really cool, is the overdrive. I just love these little features like that. They give you that highway cruising ability. All right, so then you get for instance, not just a dash with a speedometer, <clears throat> you get full gauges in here with a tachometer, 150 mile an hour speedometer. That was pretty exciting, 150 miles an hour. Nobody was really going 150 miles an hour in the 50s, right? Fuel gauge, temp, stuff like that. It's got the original AM radio in here. Heating controls are all in place like they're supposed to be. And the one thing we do for a lot of people is we like to leave the dash all kind of stock here, all right? And what we do is we put inside the glove box an AM FM sound system. But I wanted to show you was, this is really cool, is this is original paint circa 1955. We left it that way with this original decal, okay? Because I thought it was such a great piece of the history. You know, the car's been restored nicely, but I didn't want to paint this inside, because think about this, this paint right here, 60 plus years old, that is really a cool piece. All right, how about I fire it up for you so you can hear what it sounds like? Oh, by the way, this is kind of cool. Check this out, power seat. Huh? How many 60-year-old cars with a power seat still works? We just finished rebuilding all the modules inside. It even lifts up <coughs> for people who are not so tall. Check that out. How about that, huh? How do you like me now? All right, cool. Check out the exhaust. All right, this is really nice too about this car. Let me show you, come on over here. Most people don't know that uh, the convertible top in a T-Bird is actually optional. The cars came with a hard top. This one here, beautifully restored, all nice and new, brand new convertible top. I'll go ahead and put it up for you real quick so you can see what it looks like. What I wanted to show you was with the top up, how great this car still looks. It's a brand new top. You probably, if you're gonna use it once in a while, you need to put it up in the sun, let it stretch a little bit, and all the wrinkles will come out. It looks really great. And the great thing about it is too, is that it's in case you run into some foul weather this is a real drivable car and it's a classic car that you could go it was intended for people to drive them that's why with the v8 the manual transmission the power seat all the nice features of the car the radials on there the convertible top awesome awesome piece i like little stuff like this for instance again open the door and like the map light comes on you say well what's the big deal about the map light well keep in mind that's 60 and 70 year old technology wiring whatever to get it to work, a lot of times can take all day. In closing up the video on this incredible, incredible American icon, 55 T-Bird, man, in the colors of the way it came out of the factory, the interior to match, nice soft convertible top in white to match the white whites on the car and the interior itself. The colors just are a palette of just smiles. I get all excited about it because I think, how cool is this piece 
and how cool was the world, man, when this thing came out and you got to see it. Here's a chance for you again. You know, this is 2013, head to 2014. 70 years later, we're almost there, where this car is uh, back on the road, restored, and able to have some really, really great times. Anyway, call us, 301-816-1000. We'll tell you all about this first year 55 T-Bird.